You've heard the story of the flying nun. Today, we have the story of a flying saint. Steve Saint is a missionary with a visionary vehicle. CNN's Kate Baldwin has today's Edge of Discovery. We've all dreamed of a flying car, but Steve Saint, a Florida missionary. We could probably get you flying this by noon. Really? Really. He's making it a reality. Anybody who's ever been in a traffic jam, anybody who's ever been someplace where, you know, trying to get out of the parking lot at Disney has thought about, you know, if I could just fly, and this one will. It's called the Maverick. On land, zero to 60 in under four seconds. By air, it glides at 40 miles per hour. The first of its kind to get FAA approval. That is it. Its biggest success, it's intuitive. For driving, you have a steering wheel and you have a brake and an accelerator, just like an automatic car. Just which like a car. You probably have. Yep. Now, when you're going to fly, you see this one little button that says fly? Mm -hmm. All you do to fly is you flip this up. What is the biggest selling point of the Maverick versus another type of hybrid machine? There is no other machine that will do what this one will. There is no other car that will fly and go on water and go on snow. Saint and his crew at iTech, a nonprofit organization, developed the Maverick in part to solve a transportation riddle for frontier areas like the Amazon and Ecuador where Saint grew up. What do you do when the road ends? What we're doing here at iTech is we're reinventing the technology so it fits the people so that they don't have to become like us. The next step, commercial production. Look for a flying car to be coming soon to a garage near you. Kate Baldwin, CNN, Dunnellan, Florida. Halloween may be over, but candy can stick around for weeks after. One dentist in Bradford is doing something special with unwanted treats. Liz Witter has a story. On a normal day at Dr. Lemmer's office, this is what you'd see. On November 3rd, it looked a little different. Dr. Lemmer's office participates in the Halloween candy buyback program. Kids trade in candy for cash, and the candy is then donated to troops overseas. They're bringing in what they kind of don't want, and we're buying it back for a dollar a pound. And kids have big plans for their cash, like Gavin, who got $10. I'll probably keep it for my collection. Dr. Lemmer has been participating in the program for three years. He says it's not just the kids that benefit. People who may not get to partake much in Halloween get some of the benefits from that. That way, in some cases, they don't have to give up their candy or throw it away. They can just use it for other things, too. Giving up candy may be hard for kids, but Dr. Lemmer says it's encouraging healthier habits. Refined sugar is just not a good thing for teeth or our diets. Mm -hmm. Cut some calories off and they won't like have to like throw it away if they don't want it. They can just skip here so it will go to a better cause. After all the candy is collected, it will make its way overseas. This year, it added up to more than 60 pounds. Uh, the Bradford Gymnastics team, the Flames, are going to be uh, boxing up the candy and mailing it to uh, troops whose addresses we have. For SBU TV, I'm Liz Witter. Dr. Lemmer says adults have donated candy too, and he's paid out around $150 in the three years he's participated. Coming up in sports, it's game time for the St. Bonaventure men's and women's basketball teams. The offseason is finally over. The St. Bonaventure men's and women's basketball teams will see live competition for the first time since the 2010-2011 campaign during an exhibition doubleheader. Walker ahead, the layup up, and in, cuts the foul. Off a second straight 23-win season, the St. Bonaventure women's basketball team opens its 2010-2011 schedule with an exhibition contest against Edinburgh University at the Riley Center. The Lady Bonnies defeated Mansfield University 71-18 in last year's exhibition game. 
After winning its first postseason game since 2002 last year in the first round of the A-10 tournament, the men's basketball team faces Mansfield University in an exhibition tilt. The Bonnies defeated the Mountaineers 82-74 to last season. The men's team opens its regular season Friday, November 12th at Canisius. The women also begin regular season play on the 12th when the Bonnies host Binghamton at the Riley Center. In early November, a championship football game was played at St. Bonaventure. Two teams took to the field hoping to win intramural flag football. Teams Robin Hood and First Low Bros beat out more than 10 other teams in the league to make the championship game. After two 20-minute halves, First Low Bros beat Robin Hood 14-6. The winning team won intramural championship t-shirts. The intramural season for indoor soccer and five-on-five -five basketball recently started. That's all for this week on SBU TV. I'm Lauren Adams. And I'm Christy Angieski. For the rest of us here in the Coop Lab, thanks for watching.